Today is an absolutely huge day for the drone industry as flight over people here in the United States has just become a whole lot easier. Now think about all the rules and regulations that the FAA has put into place when it comes to operating a drone. You can't fly over 400 feet. You can't operate your drone over people and you can't fly out of your visual line of sight. I would say that the most inhibiting rule out of those big three is that you can't fly over people because it takes away a lot of the shot opportunities that I want to chase after, let's say here in Syracuse, capturing some of these big buildings. Look at the map though and look at all of the congestion just like you would find in any city in America. To capture the downtown section or any of these cool areas I would likely have to fly over houses and roadways so I'd have to wait for those areas to be empty or I could try to find little pocket areas to send my drone up which would make getting the perfect shot that I want very difficult. On the other hand the city that I live in Philadelphia is actually very easy to fly because of the Delaware and Schuylkill River. I can zip up and down with no worries of flying over people and get a lot of great angles of the city. Imagine if I could fly over the streets of Philly safely and illegally though and get more unique shots of the skyline. Well all of this is about to completely change thanks to this parachute made by AVSS in this case for the Mavic 3 Enterprise. This now allows me to fly over people without the need to pull a waiver. Think about this from a business standpoint. With this parachute system I'm now able to take on jobs that I otherwise wouldn't be able to accommodate because of the rules and regulations associated with flying a drone. I'd be able to easily capture aerial shots of a parade, a marathon, or any type of big event where I usually wouldn't be allowed to fly over people. On the other hand, what if I was asked to capture photos and videos of a construction site that is right in the heart of the city? That job will now be made so much easier as I can cover the whole area without worrying about the lengthy waiver process. If I get a job that needs to be done next week, I can just go and grab my drone and complete that job without needing to submit that waiver. So let's just get into it and let's log our first flight over people using a Category 2 drone and of course AVSS's parachute. Now the drone that we're going to be flying here is the Mavic 3 Enterprise. I've got the RC Pro Enterprise as well. We've got a construction site just behind the camera and a little downtown area here in Syracuse that will be flying which really wouldn't be able to be done without using this parachute because you are going to be inevitably flying over people. So we'll go ahead we'll take off. Now the first thing that I noticed right off the bat is that the sound of the motors isn't as isn't louder than it usually would be without the extra weight added on top. So it seems like it's not putting extra stress on the drone itself, which is good. That's something that whenever affixing something onto the drone, I always look for because of course you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to uh, stress the motors too much. Now, when I take off, what I'm going to initially do before I leave my takeoff area is fly up to my minimum deployment height. So therefore, if the parachute were to deploy in the event of some sort of drone failure, it has time to actually fully deploy and safely come down to the ground. Now, I've also got a special treat here for this flight. I've got Josh from AVSS. He's just off camera. He's my VO. He's the one that kind of helped me set up this whole entire flight. But I also want to lean on him to kind of talk about coming to uh, coming to putting this product together and actually allowing people to now fly over people. So Josh, I guess the first question that I have that maybe you can answer while I fly is why did you make this parachute? Who did you make it for? And what are some of the testing that you had to go through? Yeah, so, so ultimately AVSS is building these safety systems for regulatory compliance to enable the end user to do more, to be more efficient, to make more money and to save them time. In this case, we have a Category 2 compliant parachute system for the FAA. The FAA has, has the strictest, most stringent rules for flying over people. And for these, for, to comply with flight over people without a waiver, you have to comply either with Category 1, Category 2, 3, or 4. In this case, we're flying Category 2 drone. What makes the Mavic 3 Enterprise a Category 2? So a Category 2 drone um, has been demonstrated to create injuries that are equal to or less than that of a rigid object coming in and transferring 11 foot-pounds of transfer of energy. So we have to go do this parachute testing referenced as ASTM F3322 and that demonstrates that our system works as well as it gives us our descent rate and our minimum deployment altitude and some other key data points. We then go and do another ASTM international uh, industry-led standard called 3389 and this standard is, um, is basically a way in which we look at the transfer of energy. Not all drones transfer energy the same way. So you might have a drone that's made out of complete metal. Well, that's gonna cause more injury than something that's made out of feathers, for example, if they were the same weight. And so what this makes a category two is we've done this testing, which is aligned with what we call a, a means of compliance. Now, AVSS working with partners has their own means of compliance. And so we're able to kind of 
add a value chain for, for the manufacturers we work with and do all the compliance testing with third parties to, to reach this um, piece. And so that is where this category two drone, based off this testing results, we've got an aircraft that can fly over people in 15 mile per hour winds um, and basically allow for a category two operation. And a category two operation is allowed for open air assembly of people. It, it is um, a threshold in which the injury severity is so low that the FAA says, we don't need the reliability data like you would in a category four drone because the severity of injury is so low. Sure. Now, give me another piece of information here because this is something that I learned as we we're kind of setting this up. Let's say right now I'm flying here, I'm hovering above this parking garage, so technically my flight isn't over people. But now let's say if I point the gimbal, the gimbal up and I wanted to move down the road here and I wanted to go over some of these buildings, what would be my method for flying over, let's say, a street with moving cars? Yeah, so when we look at operations over moving vehicles, this is part of the rule. And as per the FAA website, which is in front of you right now, as you see on this video, is that the rule allows for the operations over moving vehicle, provided that the drone operation meets the requirements of either category one, two, or three, which were category two, and there's two ways to comply with over vehicles. One, you must be within a closed or restricted access site. So think of like a large industrial construction site, maybe an oil refinery, some sort of industrial operation really. And that all those people who are there are notified and are aware of um, that the drone is gonna fly over. That's one way. That's a little bit more restrictive where another way is that the drone does not maintain sustained flight over moving vehicles. So that's a really key point. What is sustained flight? So that's a hover, but where is that time? Now, speaking with the regulators and, and going back and forth on the nuance, it's sustained flight is more than 10 seconds. It's probably less than 10 minutes. It's very dynamic. And you as the pilot and operator, that you do have to make your own calls. If you're a commercial entity and you have a large fleet, you'll have to create your own policies where you'll look at and say, okay, what is the time? And, and what happens when the environment changes? So example, if right now a, a parade uh, came through with a bunch of vehicles, well, that might be a little bit different for sustain. So in our situation where we're flying, we are, we are maneuvering and we're not hovering over the, the roadway. Um, now we're not playing Frogger and we're not trying to avoid everything, but we're just being mindful and we're continuously the flow of the drone. Sure. So like for, for example, I'm now moving down the road here and as I'm moving, something like this would be fine for getting from spot to spot. Let's say I wanted to go and fly up over this building and then once I got over the building, I'd be able to sustain my flight. Like I have a parking garage right down here. So I could fly over to that parking garage and now that I am not above people, I could hover the drone. No, well, if there's people in that parking garage, we'd want to keep moving because keep the sustainment. Understood. We wouldn't want to just hover over that parking garage. Well, but so the parking this... garage is empty now, okay. right? So you look down, it's, it's completely empty. It's almost like an abandoned building. Okay, abandoned say. building, so then you're good to go. Go hover away. And then you'll also be able to, when you fly back to where, where we're standing right now, this is outside um, Equitable Square in, in downtown Syracuse, right beside the new Tech Garden building. And there's people that are walking the, the, the pathways but we do have sufficient space for you to come and, and hover over this area and there'd be people whereas the vehicles are still a sufficient distance away. Sure. Now, so in the distance, I'm not going to fly there because it's a little bit far out of the line of sight, but there is a highway there. So could I use this parachute system to cross the highway? So to go from one side to the other using transient flight? Yes, exactly. Again, we're not going to we're not going to just hover. We're going to we're going to be transient in our maneuver. Cool. Now, so I'm going to bring this back. But in that time, why don't you tell people like who is buying this parachute from you? Who did you make it for? What do you find to be, I guess, uh, the group of people that are going to be using this parachute the most? Is it law enforcement? Is it fire rescue? Is it construction? Like, who do you think this is built for? Yeah, so all our products, we find that, that there's some key customer base. So we have public safety, which is a large user of ours. For example, we work with Chula Vista in California on their DFR program. You know, we've logged over 12,000 missions with them. And, and that's a situation where you have DFR, you, you might be operating under a COA, but you're really worried about public perception and, and public acceptance, as well as if you were flying under your part 107. We also work a lot with engineering firms, construction firms, drone service providers, and commercial entities that have fleets of drones. So people who are buying this are, are trying to make more money, be more efficient, increase safety. Sure. And so this is where um, I would say in, in, in the market, there has been some vagueness, some grayness on what they're gonna use and, and how people push it. But these, these organizations that are buying our product are seeing this 
not just like, hey, this is the M Mavic 3 parachute, it's 1700 USD, oh, my DJI repair is cheaper. It's like, no, no, it's not about saving that drone, it's about the compliance, and it's about actually enabling your workforce to be more, more efficient. Um, you know, we were just speaking with a customer that talked about how in their operations, there's a lot of hovering and waiting for, for pathways to open up so they can play Frogger, where really, with this operations, they could be more efficient, and then they're not, and they're not worrying about hiring a security team to map, to, to rope off a large area. They're just going, they're flying, they're buying and going. Off sure. the shelf, in the air, same day, why not? Awesome. Well, this was a life-changing experience. Being able to basically fly wherever you want, right? Like being able to safely maneuver through the city and being able to get from spot to spot and get shots that you normally wouldn't be able to. So guys, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about AVSS's offerings, I'm gonna leave their uh, information down below, website, LinkedIn, wherever you wanna go and check them out. I'm also gonna be featuring the AVSS parachute for the Mavic 3 Enterprise a little bit more in depth in a later video, so definitely be sure to stay tuned. And everything else? No, thanks very much. We just had the world's first category two drone, Syracuse, New York, with Love Mr. It. Billy Kyle on the DJI <laughs> Mavic 3. Thank you guys, and I'll see you later. Peace.